Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 70 of, um, oh, I guess it's a live, the better. Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. This is episode 70 and I am recording it live. As you know, the third uh, episode of every month is recorded live and I hope that you were able to join us this month. This week's episode is called All the Hand Spun Socks because I have some things to share with you about um, some all a whole bunch of hand spun socks that I cast on this past week for travel projects because we're entering this time of the year where I'm really on the go with the kids. I'm working a lot, um, long days at the hospital, and I need something to work on. So I will be sharing that with you today. Before we get started, I have a couple of announcements to make, and uh, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, announce the giveaway winner for the Patreon subscribers for this month. In last week's show, I said that I was waiting for something to arrive, and that it had ha that instead I had re uh, received a. Uh, empty envelope and that was a big bummer. <laughs> Anyways, the company that I was working with uh, expedited a, a new package to me. It was just coming from Mississauga from Ontario so that was really easy to get and they arrived. So um, what I was really excited to share with you was, I'm going to set this up for you here. see if I can get it done um, was I for the rest of 2017 I'll put it under here actually um, I am going to be um, offering this uh, calendar for you guys which is really exciting and I'm really looking forward to being able to um, share this with you and send these out and get it into focus a little bit there so basically the um, it's for the year 2018, so these will start in January of 2018. And my goal was to create something that was really inspirational, that you guys would be excited to turn over every month. I know many of us have um, uh, craft rooms or craft areas. Maybe you work at a desk and you're sitting um, at a desk in uh, an office and this would be something that would be inspirational for you to uh, look at every month and um, inspire you on your spinning journey. So um, these are going to be um, going out from now until the end of, this is um, Wistmas. This was the Christmas colorway from Sweet Georgie Yarns a couple of years ago. One of my favorite spins. Anyways, these are going to be going out uh, for Patreon winners every month for the next, uh, until December. And then, um, we'll see um, what, where we go from there. But I, I can't get the mugs anymore, which is such a big bummer. So I'm sure that you are wondering who won, um, who won this really cool uh, um, giveaway this month. Let me just pull it up here. The winner is Fiona in Oxfordshire, who is actually on the Slack channel and is usually quite active on there. So congratulations, Fiona. Um, I already have your address, so I'm going to pop this in the mail for you this week. Um, the Woolen Spinning Radio episode five has been released. It was a chat with my friend Becca, um, who is part of the Woolen Spinning community. If you are a um, if you've been quite active in the Wool and Spain community on the Ravelry group, she's very active. She's Bethy Forty on Ravelry and in the Slack channel. And we had a chat um, over the Atlantic because she is in uh, Scotland. And uh, we chatted this month about um, all of her things. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, that is coming up. Um, welcome to Candice and to Katrina in the live chat this morning. <clears throat> That's really exciting that you guys are here. Thank you for tuning in. So if you're looking for the Ravelry group, I have linked it in the show notes over at wellforpearls.com. And I hope that uh, you will join us over there because it's a very chatty group and we've got lots going on. So I'm going to chat really quickly about what we've got going on and uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us in some of our spin alongs that we've got going on. So uh, the uh, first thing that we're working on is a stash down. So many of us have a lot of fiber coming into our stash right now and we've got a lot of things going on. Lots of projects in progress, lots of things that were, is happening. And um, 
many of us are sort of feeling a little bit overwhelmed by that. And while feeling very joyful and very grateful about all the things that we have and, and all of the things that are coming into our homes that we get the opportunity to make and create, it's also a lot of stuff to come in uh, to our stash. So all the time. So that is going on in the Ravelry group. If you are looking at wanting to uh, set some parameters around what comes in on into your stash and how you manage your stash. It's not necessarily restricting what comes in. It's just a matter of managing it. Please don't hesitate to join in and to participate. Um, the other thing that's going on is our Zero to Hero 2017. I haven't talked about this for a couple weeks um, because I've been working on other things. I'm planning on spindle spinning my project, so I may or may not get the yarn done by the end of the year, and then I'm gonna do my knitting next year. So I'm kind of dividing up my Zero to Hero over the course of a year, year and a half this year. I am trying to be really realistic about what I can and can't get done. And actually, I don't have my bats that I've made right here. They are... They're sitting in one of my bins elsewhere, but regardless, I um, am good working on my Merino Romney fleece. I've done a whole bunch of the washing. I've made quite a few bats, and now I just need to get washing and do some more um, fiber prep. So I'll be working on that slowly but surely. The other thing that is going on in the Ravelry group, and the last thing that I'm going to mention here, is our breed and color studies. Uh, our dear friend Katrina, who's um, very active in the Ravelry group and on the Slack channel, has been prepping fiber for us and we are looking at bre the Breed Gotland and we're looking sort of at long wools. So she's also set up a complementary fiber BFL uh, so that people can engage in a comparison between BFL and, and Gotland. And um, as well, we're looking at colors again um, and looking at our color studies. So we're still on split complements. We've been working on sp split complements all year. This time we're looking at green and yellow and purple. So if you're uh, interested in learning more, please head over to the Ravelry group and find out all the details. Okay, should we get on with the show? Let's see. I've had, before I move on, I have one other thing that I wanted to mention. I've had a couple of people ask me about Tour de Fleece. It's coming up in July. Um, it's a month long spin along. If you listen to some of the other podcasts out there that are um, often participate in Tour de Fleece, you will uh, know what I'm talking about, but it's a, basically almost a month long uh, spinning tour. We follow along with the Tour de France. Um, I hope that you can join us in that. I'm just not sure what all the logistics are going to look like just yet. Um, I've been chatting with Nina, and many of you know Nina. She's in the Ravelry Group Slack channel. Nina LaFontaine, um, she does the Fuzzy Love Knots uh, podcast. She was also on Wool and Spinning Radio last month in episode four. Um, her and I have been trying to figure out what we might do and sort of setting up uh, what that's all going to look like for Tour de Fleece. So please stay um, tuned. And if you have any ideas or if you would like to participate in a slightly more formal way, please uh, get in touch with me. And I think that's it for housekeeping. So now let's get on with the show. Okay. I'm just figuring out what I'm supposed to talk about today. So I think I will start with my um, socks that I've been casting on because I've been doing a lot of socks. Um, I will move that bit of beautifulness out of the way. And I'm gonna talk about my first pair of socks. I've only got just past the, the toe. And I'll see if I can I'm going to switch the cameras around and if you guys have any questions about what I'm talking about please just um, pop them into the live chat because I can see what you guys are saying and talking about and just don't hesitate to jump in and ask lots of questions if you can. I know people are having trouble with um, um, their when you're watching the live stream on a mobile device it's a little bit harder to um, interact with the live chat and ask questions and whatnot. I think there is a way to do it. I'm not totally sure how, but um, hopefully we'll be able to figure some of that out for you guys. So I'm just gonna switch my cameras around here and then you can see the project in its entirety. So this is the first project that I'm working on. The socks are in focus, so I will start with those. Um, so basically, um, this is, uh, some of you will remember I did some speckle dyeing back in, after I did that course at MIWA back in 2015, so long ago, November 2015, it feels like, like a long time ago. Um, I had done the, a lot of dyeing afterwards to sort of learn as much as I possibly could about, um, different dye techniques and it was a three-day class and I, I remember talking about it quite a bit on the on the podcast 
And basically, um, this was a braid of superwash wool that I had got and um, it had been given to me and I was plain, it was just superwash wool. And so I braided it and I dyed it and I did a speckle dye and I did dye it partially braided because I wanted to create lights and darks and areas where the dye would get really dark and areas where the dye would get really light. I feel like I talked about this on the show like way back then. And I speckle dyed it with these uh, navy blues and then the rest of it turned into this sort of um, almost neon yellowy green and then the toe um, where you can see these lighter blues. It's where the, the speckle was, there There was a, a, a part on the braid that the speckle hit the fiber but it didn't spread too much so it's ended up with this really light uh, light blue throughout it. Speckle dyeing is really interesting on braids because it it dilutes the color and turns it um, you know in, in in a yarn it stays really super concentrated where the speckling is but in a um, when you spin it it the fibers because of the staple length it pulls it apart and the speckle ends up almost like an eye cat for those who know what eye cat is it's very interesting so this is my the beginning of my first sock i'm knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles i spun the yarn very high twist and as you can see like it's all twisting back on itself here and it's all you know curly cueing uh, it's funny because knitting with it it's not very it doesn't feel high twist at all like it doesn't feel unpleasant um, <clears throat> it's, it's funny how the yarn still stays really super round and it doesn't, it's not biasing at all. Like look at how, look at how straight that toe is. So it's sort of interesting how that sort of happens with the high twist yarns. The other thing about this yarn that's sort of interesting is that, and I'll show you over here and I'll just put it into focus for you, is the, uh, the, when when I when I balled it up, if you can see that the yarn almost looks like it's not as twisted as it was, and it doesn't have any nylon in it, and it's just the the merino. And I'm wondering how well these are gonna wear. Like I'm not super super hard on my socks, but I wonder because when I look at this yarn, I'll put it right next to it. While I've been knitting with it, um, it is so high twist. And um, it, I Navajo plied this. This is Smith and You, and it's a superwash BFL again, no no nylon. Uh, but this one, while I'm while I've been knitting with it, and after I after I balled it, it stayed. It it kept its twist. But this one is almost sort of like it's like losing some of its twist as I'm knitting, and it's partially the way it's just traditional three ply. But I'm wondering if because of the superwash, the um, the it's almost like the twist never sets completely properly with a super wash for me um, there and there's nothing in it to hold the twist so even though I washed it in hot water and did all the things I'm supposed to do it just never really held its twist so I could put this through the wheel again because I've already put this yarn back through the wheel one other time to make it even higher twist and it still just keeps losing some of its twist so I'm interested to see whether or not it'll keep its twist and keep its wear as I wear the sock and as I use it. Um, so really interesting. For those who are on mobile, Candice just said in this in the Slack, in the um, uh, chat channel, that you need to go to Google Plus if you wanna interact in the live format on mobile. So thank you, Candy, for that. That's really helpful. So this is the look of the other sock and I've actually w worked on it a lot more. And I'll put the camera in. I'll put the camera in focus. And uh, see if I can get it get it into focus for you guys there. So this I'm calling my fugly sock. <laughs> it is just so crazy. Um, I don't love it. I'll be totally honest. It uh, is <sighs> the colors are very interesting. So the original colors in the original braid, I just loved. They were so gorgeous. And I bought the, the fiber because I just loved the colors. And actually, if you don't mind being patient for just a minute, I'll show you the color, like what the original braid looked like so that you guys can see it. Because um, I showed it to my best friend um, at work last night and I showed her the, 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 uh, the comparison between what these socks are looking at like and what the original fiber looked like it looked like 
And um, while these are really cool, and I had quite a few people compliment me on them um, at at work, um, they're they're not. I don't know. I. I I love the fiber. The fiber was so gorgeous. So this was the original. Um, this was the original. So you can see how pretty that was. Like it was so gorgeous. Um, and that blue was, was just so, so lovely. And for whatever reason, um, the, the socks just don't, haven't preserved that and I think part of it is because that that really orangey okra yellow um, has almost been lost in the sock like like it is there but it's not as deep as it was and it's almost like the sock with all the white on either side of all the colors um, it it muted it muted the color in all these different places and I stripped the this is what I would change because I still love the colors um, and, and Marianne is such a beautiful dyer. Um, she she had put the color on so that there was white in between each color. So there was like all the blue and then there was white and then there was the grello kind of okra gold orange yellow and then there was white and then there was the purple and you know so they were all bordered by just a little bit of, of white. And I think what happened was the um, I'm looking at the socks on the monitor right now. Um, I think because I took the pencil roving and I divided it in half. So I took an already very thin strip of fiber. Um, this is the next project I'm going to show you, but you'll get the idea. So I took an already thin strip of fiber and I stripped it like this and made it even thinner. The, the colorway, it shortened the repeat of the colorway. So the white um, mixed with the color even more and created an even more muted um, color. <laughs> I've said color a lot in the last like two seconds. So that's what I mean about being a bit disappointed because there are areas in here where the purple um, and the yellow really remained quite bright but for the most part for the rest of the sock it's unfortunately quite muted and that was a real bummer. Um, I think because I think it really I'll see if I can get this in focus a little bit better um, because this this in here is just so pretty and and down here and it's just muted I'm being overly critical mostly because I think these are things that I we we don't think about sometimes you know we're we're dividing up our fiber we want a certain weight um, you know I wanted it to be really fine and I wanted to spin for socks and in some ways I should have just spun the pencil roving end to end instead of um, dividing it and creating two bundles of fiber to each spin to a bobbin and ply and have my two skeins for my socks I talked about this um, this particular spin quite a bit on the show in past and I'll see if I can link to some of the shows that I spoke about this yarn um, so that you guys can have a better idea of what I did so those are those socks and um, while I really love them and they're really pretty they're not um, I'm a little bit disappointed with how they how they turned out so that is it I'll get rid of that for you All right, I think my camera has frozen. I'm not sure why. I'm gonna switch screens and see if I can get it working again. All right, so yeah. See, my other my my six my my six D has has disappeared. So let me just see while you guys are. Oh, see, Katrina, you read my mind. She said, "I think you're being too hard on yourself." Um, I totally get. But I knew you would say that. I. I meant, th the reason why I was talking about it in such a uh, critical way is because I, 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 these are the things that we don't think about sometimes. We just spin on autopilot and then afterwards it's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So next time I get that pencil roving, I won't divide it up like that. <laughs> the finished socks will be gorgeous. Um, don't get me wrong. I know they'll be really, really pretty, but um it's one of those things that, you know, I just didn't even think. So, 
All right, let me go on to my, I think my camera's working again. Oh, maybe not. The, um, the, the second camera keeps uh, timing out and I'm not sure why, because it shouldn't. Oh, there we go. All right, so this has, has dog hair on it. <laughs> uh, okay, so this fiber is Superwash BFL. Um, I want Katrina to try to figure out how to dye this, these colors again. Now, if I go back here, does that, oh no, it's working now. Okay. Um, this was some fiber from Sweet Georgia that was dyed. It was a, a one-off. They were playing with some new dye techniques and it was something that, um, they had played with, um, and my friend Charlotte had poured a whole bunch of dye on and now she can't, um, recreate it. So this is um, some really cool, I just think this is just so beautiful. Um, I just love this. I saw this in the teaching bin when I got to the studio one night uh, la a couple weeks ago and I said to Charlotte, oh my goodness, I just love this so much. And it's just like a little tiny taster of fiber. Like it's very short. I'll show you the length of the, it's only about um, 40 grams. And there was a whole bunch in the bin and so I didn't feel badly about asking her if I could have it. Um, she actually offered it to me. So that is what it looks like. Um, so just a little bump of fiber. So I've divided some of it up. Oh, Katrina says she's already been dreaming about how to recreate this colorway. So that would be awesome because Charlotte has no idea what she did. <laughs> I told her she had to figure it out, but she said she's, she's tried and she does, has no idea. So this is the fiber unbraided. So it's very interesting because the dye was poured on and I'll get the camera in focus for you guys so that you can really see. And um, it's so pretty, it is so cool. Um, I just love it. So I've been testing a spindle at the same time. And um, so I, I, I stripped it down into these little tiny nests and I've been testing um, a spindle. So this spindle, somebody in the chat channel will recognize it. I'll give you two guesses who will recognize it. See if anybody can, can figure out who, who made this spindle. Um, oh, I'll get rid of that box for you guys. It's super annoying. And I'll switch around the camera. All right, let's see if I can I'm still learning all of this. It's really cool to learn all of this. Like it's such a neat um, for, forum to be able to, to, to do, but uh, it's a lot of like learning how to manage all of this at the same time while I'm talking. So please bear with me. Um, okay, so I'm gonna leave that how it is for the, for the time being so that I can chat with you guys about this project. So I've been doing a worsted draft and I've been, um, <laughs> Katrina got it. She said, Eric, so it's her husband. Um, Eric made these spindles. I have another one that he made and I haven't tested it out yet, but here's the other one. Um, and I'm hoping that I can um, play with this one over the course of this week. And uh, yeah, I just really love, love um, these spindles. They're so cool. So this spindle has been going really well and I'm noticing that my webcam camera keeps uh, pausing. So um, if it gets, if it continues, we'll just say goodbye and finish the show a little bit early because I, I can tell it's probably a bit annoying. Um, yeah, so I've been doing a worsted draft. I've been um, just, this is the lighter weight, the smaller weight spindle. I'll put them next to each other so that you can see the difference. This one is heavier um, and this one is uh, quite a bit lighter. So I, I thought I would play with that for the spinning um, of the singles of this fiber and it's been really um, working well. It's just a worsted, I've just been um, drawing out worsted. Um, so taking the fiber and just drafting, drafting out and smoothing, drafting out and smoothing. So um, it's creating just a really lovely um, worsted yarn. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to fit on this spindle. Um, my only feedback that I need to talk to Katrina about is making the notch a little bit bigger. The notch here where my thumb is it needs to be um, bigger because the fiber the yarn now that the spindle is loaded need it just keeps popping out and lots and lots of spindles do that and I know part of it is to keep the 
whirl as balanced as possible and it's really important to do that but um, it's just a little bit too shallow the nice thing about the hook is that it's so um, this one has a very similar hook they're so fine the hooks are so fine and you see the notch there at the top it's um right in line with the shaft of the hook so right at the top where your fiber goes is right in line with this it's just lovely to spin like it doesn't wobble at all um, it just hangs there and and spins which is really I'm, I'm really enjoying that um, I I need to get a couple more um, top whirl spindles because I don't have any I'm um, down I only have about four no I have three and um, I'm always trying to find a spindle to spin on um, so I I've been talking to you know Katrina and my friend Diana about getting a couple more I also really want to get a couple of support spindles so I've been looking at a couple of support spindles that are out there that people are often posting on some of the support spindlers on Instagram that I follow quite closely I've been really watching what they've been using because I'm willing I'm I don't mind spending a little bit of money you know 50 or 70 or 80 dollars on a support spindle but I want to get a couple um, of spindles to add to my fleet so anyways I've been really enjoying this project and I've been taking it outside while I've been outside with the kids this past week and I, I got a little bit done which was really fun and I've kind of put my spinning sock six pack aside again only because I am almost finished spring garden and then I'm gonna be on to my next thing so I need to unload my spindle I'm kind of in a holding pattern I need to actually um, put it in my makeshift lazy Kate and unload it so that I can start the next little batch of uh, that pack and I just haven't gotten there yet so slowly but surely I'll get through everything um, you maybe will notice what I'm wearing today my necklace um, Nora gave it to me this morning for Mother's Day so here in Canada today is Mother's Day so happy Mother's Day to everybody who um, is celebrating and I know in other parts of the world it was already Mother's Day um, this spring I know in Britain already had theirs but we ours is today so Nora made me this and James made me a uh, oven mitt it's, he didn't make the oven mitt, but they at school they had the oven mitt, and then they um, did with fabric paint. They uh, put they did an imprint of their hands on the back of the oven mitt to mimic the handprint of the oven mitt. It was really neat. Anyways, very thoughtful, very lovely. Of course, the first thing Nora said when I put the necklace on was. Um, whether or not she could borrow it <laughs> so um, it's obviously purple her favorite color so I'm gonna give it back to her um, after I finish here and uh, she'll be able to wear it because I know she was really wanting it <laughs> anyways I hope you all have a wonderful day have a wonderful Sunday happy Mother's Day to those who are here in Canada and to everybody else happy spinning and I'll chat with you next week bye everyone